Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this, by which I mean... Listen to the change in the drums when I turn it on. What you're hearing is my new plugin, X Notch, which is something that I hope that you will enjoy. Here, I'll hush that up for a moment. Here's the deal X Notch is one of my sort of X series uh, EQ experiments. I was asked since I have a uh, low pass and a high pass and a band pass and I'm doing strange things with all of those, could I also do a notch filter? And what I ended up getting was not exactly what I expected. Here's the deal. I tried it out and got the usual sort of X-series air windows, weirdnesses and artifacts and stuff. And that's interesting. You can get that out of like uh, X high pass and so on. But I tried X Notch a little bit differently. And here, let's uh, make another sound. And I'll solo just this ride and hat, which is kind of what I was testing it out on. Here's the kind of things you can do with a distorted notch filter. And I'll add this is not quite the same as the previous ones, because with this one, If you distort it, it doesn't go crazy. Like, it might get a little bit loud. But uh, it's not getting too ridiculous. And that's because it's doing its distortion in a different place. Unlike the other ones, this one's doing its distortion not in the middle of the EQ algorithms. So as a result of that, it doesn't do quite the same crazy things. And the reason I kept it was it started making such good sounds that I decided I was going to throw it into the X series just as it was. There's also a couple of other interesting things about it, such as... It can sound kind of phase shiftery, but uh, an earlier version of it sounded even more phase shiftery, so we might be able to get more of that if we want. And you can get gain out of it. And you can pretty much hear the usefulness of the sounds here. And also a, a hint of the phasiness. But there was something else to hear, which is, in this configuration, the biquad filter doesn't seem to freak out too much when you move it around abruptly. So this one... You can move a little more aggressively without anything bad happening. Like I hear a certain kind of popping, but considering that you have to crank it out so much to make that happen anyway... I wouldn't consider that to be that big of a problem. Like with the other ones, the new control is giving you a uh, one stage of filtering all the way over here. we got the same gain control as the other ones have. And we got the dry wet in the end. I believe... Oh, come to think of it, let me... Let's clean this up just a bit. I had this thing selected. We can more easily hear what I was just doing. We were hearing both of the channels at once, and I had something a little special going on in the kick. I'll show you what it was. Um, here's the kick drum mic all by itself. It's actually behind the drum stool because I'm Chris from Air Windows and I do weird things if I think they'll sound good. And here's when we put the notch filter in. 
and I had the other one voiced a little bit differently. I had it voiced kind of like this. And I was using the, uh, the right hat to try to focus on the cymbals and brighten them up a little bit by notching out the low highs, as it were. Like up here, I'm taking away all the trouble, but it starts coming in at the top when I bring the notch down a little bit. And I can bring it down until even the, uh, the edgy upper mids are poking out. This is basically just what you get from notching various things out. And then when you include the kick, which is notching a different thing out and pointing towards the kick drum, you can get a combination sound that might have usefulness. And this is just being done through two separate notch filters, each of which are distorting different amounts in different ways. They're kind of melding together to make something that's kind of more interesting. But the amount of complication that you have to do with it to get this sort of modernistic sound is not as great as you might think. And we're using dry wet to exaggerate that. If I gave it all wet, we can get a really exaggerated sound where. Uh, really dominating the mix, no matter what's in the mix. But yeah, what I was going to show you was... We can move around this frequency filter more aggressively. And it's kind of making some artifacts, but we're not getting the same kind of zippery noises and things from the other ones. And you can pretty plainly hear how I had an earlier version of this sounding like a phase shifter. Which makes it handy that this is so automatable, we can really do aggressive things with it. We can use it to notch out subs. Or notch out lows. eyes, whatever, or clean it up. If we have only this being heard and we're also uh, all wet, we can hear it even at a nuke of zero, which is only one stage of filtering. It's fairly subtle when we're doing this, but I mean that's half the fun. Like maybe sometimes you might want to put a little bit of gain in there, because this does still have distortion elements in it. But rather than, say, doing a craziness, we can dial both of these back. And instead of doing this with Nuke, kind of dial in the notches where we want them, have only one stage of filtering here, and do the other stuff with just gain, and then we can still apply dry wet if we want to clean it right up. This is what you can get through applying this kind of thing and using notch filters rather than like let's boost the highs and also the lows and also this and also that. You can look for something in any particular microphone or sound and intentionally notch that out and then use a distortion to kind of boost and thicken up everything else. 
it just kind of it just kind of works nicely together. It's the kind of thing where the uh, the nuke filter can give you more stages of it. The notch filter can take out areas that aren't serving your purpose in the mix. I would say always do this kind of work while monitoring the full mix. And then you can use the dry wet to bring in the raw sound and bring back in some of that stuff that you might have notched out. And the additional saturation that you give is only part of the notched out EQ'd stuff, whereas the dry stuff is all full dynamic range. It just, it works so well that this one doesn't have any of the funny stuff going on with the previous X-Series filters, where they would make weird artifacts or swoopy noises, or you could turn up the nuke and have weird growly sounds and things that were intended to sound kind of like an older sampler. Uh, this is not that. This is a much simpler version of equalization combined with some saturation. And you, you have like many stages of saturation if you turn the nuke up all the way. So you got quite a lot of gain on tap if you really want to push it. But like I've shown you, you can also dial it right back. And, you know, the way it works, if you can make your sounds happen using just a... Um, a certain degree of overdrive and a certain degree of notching out some area that you know you're not going to want. This can be a really quick way to get effective sounds that work in the mix. And again, I'm going to reiterate, you should be doing this adjusting while listening to the full mix because stuff will just mesh together better that way. And it's just my recommendation that don't, don't, make amazing sounds using this entirely in solo, I would work with stuff in the context of the entire tapestry of the mix you're putting together. That's about it, really. This is X Notch. This is the latest in my series of experiments, which are ongoing and continuing. I'm going to get back into it uh, this coming Monday. And it is Audio Unit and Mac VST and Linux VST and Windows VST, both 32 and 64-bit. The Mac VST is PowerPC 32 and 64-bit. And then there's also Signed Mac VST and Signed Mac Audio Unit, which are for modern computers and are 64-bit and M1 processor. And all of that stuff is now included with everything that I do. So my releases are covering the full range from like G3 and G4 Max to the very newest M1s, and uh, Big Sur, etc., all that kind of stuff. So I hope you like them. All of this is supported by Patreon. Patreon is doing super well, so I'll be saving up to get more samplers and things to get more inspiration. Uh, people keep telling me that I should take their money and go on a vacation. I don't know about that, but maybe I'll take some time Rather than cranking away on all of these things, I might take some time to play with the sampler that I got and learn a little bit more about it, because I do kind of have to do that to learn it. Uh, if you want to join the Patreon, you know where to go. If you would buy this plugin for 50 bucks a pop, including like perpetual license for as many computers as you want, oh, and also you get the source code, if that sounds like a good deal for 50 bucks to have that, etc., forever, then you can add that to the Patreon per year. And if you come back in another year, maybe I will have done another plugin that you like. We'll see. Also, if you would like YouTube to show my videos to more people, you know what to do. I don't have to tell you. Everybody's able to tell you this one. If you'd like YouTube to show this stuff to other people, you know what to do. So on that note, let me uh, here go back to my main camera view. And hey, I'll see some of you folks on Monday. I'm thinking about trying a plugin that takes the bandpass thing and spreads out the frequencies because each of the each of the stages of um, filtering on X bandpass distorts individually. And I'm real curious to see what you get. If you take that and then you stagger 
the frequencies of the band pass out so that they're each distorting on a slightly different band. There's some there's some ideas around that. I need to hear what it sounds like and whether it would be better to distort the high frequency stuff first or the low frequency stuff first, etc. So uh, yeah, more will be revealed there. Let's see if we can do a crazy uh, wide, broad band pass kind of thing going on. Uh, that'll be another experimental plugin. So I'll see some of you folks on Monday when I do that. And hey, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.